Greetings. I bought myself a new toy. This is a Gigapan Epic 100 robotic camera mount. It says so on the box. Let's take a look inside. Basic um, instructions telling you to register it, open the email, download, and then get your software because there's no software with it. Uh, warranty slip and a quick start guide. And then lurking behind this piece of cardboard, we have. The Gigapan itself. And in case you're wondering what it is, an Epic 100 lets you mount an ordinary camera on its tripod mount. And this will mount on the tripod itself that and it can automatically take multiple images to build up a large a large image or a large panorama if you look at the images which have come back from the Mars rovers you'll see the way they're all stitched together and this is pretty much what they've got because this was developed between uh, one of the universities uh, Carnegie I think it is and NASA and as I said, you've got your camera mounted on the front. You don't need any special cable. It's just got this robotic button pusher here, which automatically you adjust the right position. Will automatically press the button on the on the camera. No need for any fancy cables. You've already seen what comes with it. Just three sheets of A5. If you want the manual, you've got to download it and print it out. The odd thing about the manual for the Epic and the Epic 100 is the manual will mention, for example, for instructions on how to shoot a 360 degree panorama, please see chapter 7. This one only goes up to chapter 6. Chapter 7 is in the Pro one, but the instructions for shooting the 360 panorama are in here, so it's just a few things which they've messed up in the PDF. But this basically goes through everything you need to know, all the parts, where the batteries go, how to set it up, because you can see there's an adjuster here, which lets you position the camera. There are certain marks here and you've got to pick the right one of these, what they refer to as black numbers, depending on the height of your lens, the centre of your lens from the, the bracket. And you can also slide it back and forth as well to adjust the, the nodal point, the point where everything all meets together. You can adjust that to get that at the correct position, so you eliminate parallax error when the camera is panning around. It's all covered in the manual, you just got to download it and print it. So let's take a look around it. We've got the bracket, which lets you mount the camera. That lets you adjust the position of the camera. You line the camera up with these notches here. So that the center of the lens is lined up with these notches. If you want to adjust the position of the camera, you can do that. which will let you adjust the position of the camera relative to this as well. You can adjust the height of the button pusher to make sure that it's, it's just the right position to press the button. And you can adjust the position of the button pusher as well like that. And the button pusher is wired down to the main unit, which I'll show you running in a second. That's on the stepper motor. And so is the base. 
there's not much else to see on here. No connections there or there. In fact, no connections anywhere. No external battery connections, interestingly. It's designed to run purely on six AA batteries, which go in this battery case. What I've done is I've bought, to go along with this, another battery case. And this one I've wired up to a 9 volt regulator. So I can run this from a cigarette lighter socket on a jump starter or a battery like that with a cigarette lighter connection on it. Obviously that ruins the battery connections on this, hence me buying a second one. All I've done with this is run the wires straight down along there, taped over them, and there's a hole at the end that the cable goes through. So to convert it to run on 12 volt car battery, just take that one out and slot this one in. They're a bit stiff, but there we go, that's clipped in and now it'll run on 12 volts. It'll run for quite a while on 12 volts as well. Now I've got that fitted, might as well power it up. Ask me if I want to resume the panorama I was on last, which I don't want to. So it's got this basic menu, four buttons, and an extra cancel and an OK button, which is also if you hold it down, the power off button. First thing you'd do with this is you'd use the camera and you'd set its field of view, and for that You've got the camera mounted on there and you go through to Gigapan setup, current field of view, press OK, set the camera to full zoom, then OK again. Use buttons to the right, align the camera with the top of the screen, uh, align the horizon, sorry, with the top of the screen. So that could be the horizon, it could be the, you know any sort of marker that you can use. And you adjust it to see that so you'd have your horizon or whatever it is lined up just with the top of the screen in fact I should demonstrate that with with the camera here and I'll use the edge of the table there so I'll just line that up just with the top of the screen like that then press OK that's got its reference point, and now I've got to line that same horizon up with the bottom of the screen. And that will give you the field of view for the camera. In fact, what I what I should have done was zoom the zoom the camera in first. So let's just try that again. Gigapan setup. Full zoom, align the horizon with the top of the lens, OK, align it with the bottom and it's got 11.4 degrees, press OK and it's set that now so it knows now how much the camera can see with a particular field of view, so it knows it can take a shot there, move down. Uh, less than 11.4 degrees because it's got some overlap. Take another shot, move down, take another shot, so f and so on and so forth. If that was wrong, it wouldn't know. So it would either take way too many shots or it wouldn't take enough shots and you'd have gaps in between the shots. So that's it set there. That's the basic setting for the camera. And you then go and take a new panorama. Full zoom, yep. Yeah. And it wants the upper left corner, 
So you move to the upper left corner of the panorama. Then it wants the lower right corner. And that's how many pictures it will take there to do that very simple 3x3 three three panorama. Let's just check. Right. Um, let's just click OK on that. Show the panorama. If I do this, it'll show you. It'll do a little tour of duty now just to go to each corner of the panorama so you can check in the viewfinder that you've got everything you want and in fact a little bit more overlap than what you want in the panorama do you want to take nine pictures yes is the camera on yes is the balance locked In fact, I should put that on that mode. And is the balance locked? Uh, yes, in fact, it's on cloudy setting. Is exposure locked? Yes. Focus is locked. I'm in manual focus mode. Okay, the flash off. Yes, the flash is off. Taking panorama. And this I've deliberately slowed down. So it's giving the camera plenty of time to take a photo, even in RAW mode, because it knows it's going to take a little while. In fact, it's a little bit too slow for this one. I was using this with a faster card. But you can see what happens there if you haven't given it long enough. But also what I can do here is I can pause that panorama. Oh, in fact, it's saying the program's done. But it's okay. If I go to the last panorama, show the panorama. No, I know which one it is. Oops. Skip it. In fact, I can choose the start image here. So I can go to number two, which I know I missed just now, and OK, take panorama. I know that was that last picture that I missed. It took all the rest. So there we have, we have nine shots which, which form together to create one big picture. And that's just a rough example. I know if I mount my one and a half times lens on this at full zoom, the field of view is 8.4 degrees. I can take a, a 360 degree panorama with 48 shots around and I know I fit 14 shots vertically on a 16 gig card. So that's a total of 672 images. This is a 10 megapixel camera. That means it's taking 6.7 gigapixels of, of imagery which you can splice together into one photo, which won't be 6.7 gig, it'll be more like 3, 3.5 gig, but you get the idea. For a 360 degree panorama, I can cancel this. And choose to do a new panorama, no, a 360 degree panorama, and for this, it doesn't want the top left and bottom right, all it wants is the top and the bottom. It knows it's 35 across around for this panorama because it knows the, the, the field of view of this lens and three vertically. It's okay. Show panorama. Okay, yes. That's the left. 
that's the right, it's going right the way around there. Bottom right, bottom left. Center. Do you want to take the shots? Yes. Yeah. 105 this time. Yes. And that will spin round now. And start taking photos. And you can just keep on taking photos until it's taking all of the photos it needs for a massive panorama. And the good thing about this is that, okay, I've got a 10 megapixel camera on here and I can take 6 gigapixel images with it. Now, what if in a couple of years' time someone says, ah, your 10 megapixel camera, that's pants, that's rubbish. I've got myself a gigapixel camera here, it is a gigapixel right off the bat. Okay, let's put the gigapixel camera on here and take a 600 gigapixel image. So in that respect, this thing is future-proof. As long as you can fit the camera on it, it's good to go. And if you can't fit the camera on it, you can replace this button pusher with a cable and use that instead. Anyway, that's enough of taking pictures indoors. Let's take it outside. As you can see, I've got the Gigapan set up now with my Panasonic DMC LX2 camera on the top. And I've got both camera and Gigapan connected via a pair of voltage regulators to a 12 volt battery. So rather than relying on internal batteries, and just run on that 12 amp hour battery there, which will last for hours. What's not so standard here, as you can see, I've got this Canon 1.5 times teleconverter with the lens barrel, which clips onto the front of the camera. It doesn't clip very securely, so I've actually got it supported with a, a PC bracket. Not very professional, but it works. And on this side, you can see the camera will be triggered by the button pusher, like so. That's the building I'm going to take a shot of, just to try it out. So, Gigapan on. And the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to set the field of view. And to do that, I turn the camera on. I'll zoom in all the way in. And we'll use one of these steps as a reference. Okay, set the full zoom, done it. Use the buttons to align the horizon with the top of the camera screen. So I'll use one of those steps there and align it with the top of the screen. So the very, very top edge there along the top. So let's touch more. That'll do. Okay. Now I set the same set of steps with the bottom of the screen. that there we go so that reckons now 8.4 degrees so this knows how much it's got to move to be able to capture all of the shots without missing any edges or too much overlap so it's okay that as you can see the camera's level as well I've already adjusted the legs on the tripod for that so we will create a new panorama set to full zoom already done it so the upper left corner. So let's move that up. In fact, I might as well put this into widescreen mode because with these cameras in raw mode, they actually take the full frame anyway. Even if you've got it in four to three mode, it'll still take the entire sensor. So let's get the 
top corner of the building. Top corner of the frame at least. Let's see if I've got the... Make sure I've got everything that's going to be in shot. Yeah. So I'll start there. And OK. That's the upper left corner. Now I'll set the lower right corner instead. Which I'll have there. There. And you can see now it knows it's going to be 10 picks across, 9 picks down. So 90 photos altogether. 679 spaces available on what is a blank 16 gig card. Show the panorama. At this point I could let it wheel around and it will show you the, the, the far corners of the panorama. In fact I might as well show you. Let's, let's do this. That's top left. That's top right. Lower right, lower left, and that's the center. Any key to continue. Do you want to take 90 pictures? Okay. Is the camera on? Yes, the camera's on. Is the balance locked? No, the balance isn't locked. Let's set this. Remember how to set the white balance. White balance. Yeah, it's locked. Um, let's lock it for cloudy day, which it is. Seems it's raining. I'll leave the rest as it is. I'm going to set for manual focus. And I can then use this to make sure. Is in focus. I'll just do a test shot here just to see what it comes out like. That looks okay. Clean the lens. Okay. Exposure locked. Yes. Focus locked. Yes. Flash is off. Yes. Let's take the panorama. As you can see this appears to be quite a high speed card so I could speed this up if I wanted to. At the moment it's taking 8 seconds between shots. Which gives the camera plenty of time to save the raw image. You can see it's getting a lot of rain on here, so what I can do is I can pause this and I can step it back.
through some of the shots and give the lens a clean. And then just carry on. As you can see, all done. Let's get these back on the computer. I've got the photos across onto the computer. I'm just going to browse into that folder now with Autopano Giga. The GigaPan does come bundled with software called Stitch, which is a lot more basic than Autopano Giga. This does a really good job of it and it can support raw images, which is something Stitch doesn't. You'd have to You'd have to convert them using Photoshop or Urban View or something like that and just do a batch conversion into PNGs or TIFFs or something else that it would actually be able to handle. That's all the images brought in. It's now finding matching points within the image. You can see the pictures it's brought in, it's created a single panorama from the whole thing. On this monitor here, you can see with the with the pictures all numbered. If I turn off the number editor and just go to there, no. You can see this has got a section of it cropped out. You can adjust the size of the, the cropped out bit. You could render the entire thing right out to the edge, but I've just decided to do this. And here's the finished image. There's a little bit of blurring here because I it looks like I managed to knock the camera when the when the photo was taken then. But all in all, for a first outdoor attempt with the with the Giga Pen, I think that's pretty good. I think the, the pictures will get uh, will get better than that as time goes on. As I get used to actually using my camera. So now you know why. In my last video, I tore down a cheap Panasonic camcorder power supply. It's so I can make that. Between that and those, I can run the whole lot on 12 volts. And it'll run for hours. I bet you'd love to see inside this thing now. Huh, you nuts, this thing was 400 quid. Oh, go on then. Let's see. We've got this button pusher here, which is actually, it looks like the cable's sealed in, but it actually can unplug, because you can replace that with a dedicated cable if you've got a camera that needs it. There are some cameras where the button pusher won't reach but fortunately there is a cable available to do the job. This is the button pusher. What's inside the button pusher? Nothing much. In fact, it's a spring, little bracket and a radio control servo. which is a high-tech HS322HD. So that's how that's controlled, just a standard servo motor. And obviously that's just part of the, the thing. You've got the button pusher, 
there's a motor here and there's a motor there and they're controlled by the gubbins just under this lid there this is the brains of a Gigapan Epic 100 it's four angled screws Let's see, they're all normal screws on this, by the way. Nothing fancy, no Torx, no System Zero, no pentalobes or tri wings. They're just standard Phillips screws. Here are the buttons, obviously. Nothing holding them in now, so be careful with that. And here is the board itself two stepper motor connections. The red wire, the black wire, a dark blue wire, which looks like the black wire, and the green wire. And there's the incoming connection for the battery terminals. On the board, not much to see. There's the connection which goes to the button pusher, or whatever external cable you've got. There's a pot there which I'm not going to adjust. And here are your cancel, OK, up, down, left, right buttons. And this is a Gigapan Epic C PCB version 1.1, copyright 2009. You can't see the brains of it there. Well, not the actual brains, brains, this is the main board of it. The brains are right under there. Let's take a closer look at that. Interesting connections here too. JTAG, programming port, who knows? They just marked up as J5 and J6 and there's J3 across there as well. With the display very carefully lifted off, you can see a bit more of the board. And there's not much to show for it really. There's an Atmel Atmega 324P and the only other chip of interest on here really is this PT76850 which looks quite fancy. All that is is a Texas Instruments low dropout voltage regulator kicking out 5 volts. Now I'd love to show you the stepper motors, but I can't get at them. I think there's one buried under here, so I'd have to peel my serial number sticker off the back. And there's another one under there, and even if you take these two screws out, you still can't get that cover off, because this cover is in the way. And God knows which screws altogether hold that on, so you'd end up taking the whole thing to bits, and I don't fancy doing that. I've already shown you way more than you'd normally see in one of these. Oh, by the way, it's also got a bubble level there, so you can make sure when it's on your tripod that it's absolutely dead level before you start taking your panorama and another thing which I've tested is this is not electrically connected to the supply so if you mount a camera on here it doesn't matter you're not going to accidentally cause any sort of shorts of, of the uh, the supplies because this is completely independent of those so you don't have to worry about having a grounded camera and all of a sudden being shorted to 12 volts or anything. It seems perfectly fine. I've done it myself. One last thing which I think would be worth taking a look at on this is its power consumption. Now this isn't going to be spot on because I am running it through this DC voltage regulator. So maybe getting a few milliamps drawn by this. In fact, that's drawing about 40 milliamps on its own. So we'll use that as a, as a base, 41 milliamps. You can see a negligible difference there with the power off. The power on. Jumps up to half an amp when it's trying to run the servo. And it settles down to in this case 76 milliamps so it's actually probably about 35 milliamps actually plus this if you're using a switch mode regulator then 
it would probably last a lot longer because this is stepping from 12 volts down to 9 volts so the current will get you'll get a bit, bit more current for your money as well then this one is just a basic LM317 based voltage regulator so dropping from 12 volts down to 9 volts if I'm drawing an amp that's dumping 3 watts out as heat there we go it's settled at 66 now so you're talking about 25 milliamps it'll go up a touch when the display comes on now, if it's actually thinking about doing something even with it paused like that you can see it's not running the motors it's pulling about half an amp now this will give you some idea of how long your batteries will last if you're using um, alkaline batteries or rechargeables in the battery cage rather than using an external battery so it's pulling about half an amp there in full flow if I just spin that up to there you can see it peaks at about 1.3 amps Now I'm using a half amp regulator but because it's only briefly going up above the half amp mark then I think I can get away with this if I had any problems with it I could replace that with a bigger regulator so I'd expect from that if you had 600 milliamp hour batteries you may get an hour's worth of use out of it with a big thing like this 12 amp hour 12 amp hour battery you run out of space on the camera before you run out of juice in the battery anyway I hope you like it the links to the three versions of the image I took earlier are in the description help yourself would I recommend one of these if you're a photographer or if you like taking especially if you like taking landscape photography definitely I mean, unlike a lens, it's not going to be a case of you get a new camera, oh no, I'm going to have to throw this out and get a brand new one, almost the same, just to fit my new camera. No, your new camera, chances are, it'll fit right on there. The only reason you'd need a newer Gigapan is if you've got a big camera with a huge lens, because there is a weight limit on these, and the bigger ones will take, I think, a £10 camera, whereas this will take £3 worth of camera, and the, the Epic, rather than the Epic 100, will take I think one and a half pounds of camera so that's about the only reason you'd need to trade up on one of these so basically it's something you can you can use and you can keep on using it and it'll still be really useful in years to come hope you like it thanks for watching catch you soon